Bob dead. With just eight confirmed kills, barely half that of last time, Adam's total has tanked. Adam's technique seemed to be to run around the perimeter of the circle as fast as he could to collect as many zombie bodies as he could. But he's having to put a lot of effort into getting it going, and it actually takes a lot more time. From above, it looked like an iris that was closing on Adam. And when it got small enough, he was done for. The new technique has clearly slowed Adam down. But the key question remains. How does the ax compare to the gun? It's time. OK, zombies, face masks down. To find out, Jamie's armed with a paintball pistol that, at the request of fans, has been set to semi-automatic. All right, zombies, are you ready? Are you ready for some sweet, sweet Heinemann flush brains? <laughs> All right, here we go. Starting gun test in three, two, one. From the get-go, it's clear that Jamie's semi-auto is fast. But it's not fast enough to let him shoot his way out of trouble. I'm down. I don't think he got more than eight. In total, Jamie manages only seven kills, one less than Adam. One of my favorite things about this show, one of the most scientific things that we do is we take feedback after episodes have aired and we go back and re retest things. I love that. Fans did not like my axe technique, so we rejiggered it, made my axe much more realistic to swing. And as expected, that radically reduced the number of zombies that I could kill. But I thought that Jamie was going to mop the floor with me with his use of his new semi-auto paintball pistol. And yet, he didn't improve his score at all. I am totally gobsmacked that it seems right now, like axe versus gun, it's, it's axe. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah. Yep, despite the slowdown, the axe is ahead by a head. But there's way more to come for our armchair army. I'm ready. But only after some retail therapy. And we are pretty much done. Five checkout stands each with working cash registers and indicator lights. 5,000 separate food items arrayed on over 750 feet of shelving, every single one with its own label. $56,000 in Play Mythbusters money. This is, without a doubt, the most elaborate experimental setup we have ever implemented. All to find out which is the more efficient way to wait online. And we are pretty much ready to go. We just got to make sure that everything is properly priced. This one doesn't have a price. That's a problem. The guys are testing whether the traditional pick-a-lane method is really slower than one long line, known in the trade as the serpentine. And with their 5,000 products all priced, their elaborate plan is ready to be revealed. Here's how this experimental setup works. We've got 120 volunteers, and they will enter the store where they'll receive a shopping list of exactly how many items we want them to buy. Then they'll go get a cart. Once they have their cart, they'll enter the store and choose from the vast selection of Mythbusters merchandise on display. Personally, I hope we get cookies. Once our customer gets in line for the cashier, that's when the data collection actually begins. They will pull out their timestamp card and enter the precise moment they got in line. Then they'll proceed right towards the cashier. Once our customer reaches the cashier, that's when they enter the second data point, the time they got to the checkout stand. Thus, we will have the precise length of time they spent waiting in line. Our last stop is here, data collection, where we not only gather our customers' timestamps, but we're also interested in their experience. So on the back of each time card, they will grade their overall satisfaction with the line. 